The next one. Psalm 35. His anger is but for a moment. Now look at this. His favor is for life. It lasts forever. Let me deal with that last part first, and then we'll, we'll close with favors for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It's a beautiful little phrase that, that is another juxtaposition. Anger, favor. Temporary, eternal. Weeping, joy. Night, morning. That's just good poetic writing. Okay? You want to write poetry? You don't have to rhyme every word at the end of the line, but you need to do something like that. You need to cause the mind to make those connections to see where you're going. And so the author says to you, you might cry for the night. Don't worry, joy comes in the morning. It's the author's way of saying that no matter what you're going through right now, yes, you might even weep. It doesn't mean God has abandoned you. It means it's nighttime. But the joy comes in the morning in that if you are struggling with the night, this is what the metaphor means. If you're struggling getting through the night, the good news is every single night of your life, you can rest assured the sun always comes up. It always comes up. That's one of those revelations as a kid. You have it really, really young. I kind of remember that moment. For some reason, one night you stay up really, really late. You're four years old, later than you've ever stayed up in your life. And it's three o'clock in the morning and it's pitch black. And the night is so long because you're always in bed at eight o'clock you're four and here you are and it's 3 a.m. and you go, does this last forever and there's that little bitty fear that it's always night we kind of take for granted because we know the sun always comes up and I remember having that little revelation as a kid what if one night it didn't end what if the sun didn't come up how do you know that it's going to come up the next day and let me ask you how do you know that it's going to come up the next day don't give me science because the earth is spinning no how do you know you only know because it always came up every single morning of your life, right? You don't even need science. You just needed to live a few days. And it didn't take long for you to go, you know, it's always came up. It's always going to come up. The author is saying, favor doesn't deny that there's a night. But favor believes because God is always good that the sun is going to come up on the other side. So favor doesn't run around and go, well, I lost God's favor because they, they, I, I lost my job. No, favor says, no matter what, I always win. No, no matter what, I promise I will win. And it might not even be the, the game I'm playing. But I will win in the greater game. Because all things work together. For the good of those who love the Lord and are the called. The called according to His purpose. And I'm the called because I've received His call. Not ministry. Jesus. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. That's the call. I receive that call. All things work together for my good. Why? Because even though I weep for the night, joy comes in the morning. Why? Because favor lasts forever. Let's look at some more translations. Psalms 30 and 5. In my next one, I think we use the... ASV, American Standard Version, for his anger, I just want you to see some different ones. His anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I like that, lifetime. His favor is for a lifetime. Give me next, another one. I think we use the message. The message Bible. He gets angry once in a while, but across a lifetime there's only love. The nights of crying your eyes out give way to days of laughter. I like the way that, that's written. He might get angry once in a while, but across the lifetime there's no love. Let me, sit, let me conclude this with this thought about anger and favor. I believe that God's anger has been exhausted against your sin at the cross. I am not saying that God does not have the capacity for anger now. That would mean that God has changed the way He moves, and He is the same. He functions through covenant. And in regards to getting mad at your sin, he can't because he can't judge sin twice. So for someone to say God can't get angry, they're not making a correct statement. That would be removing the possibility of anger from God. Can daddy still get angry? Yes. What does he get angry at? I, you say... Do, 
I don't think he's ever changed getting angry at the perception of separation between man and himself. He can't rejudge sin. He's already judged it once. And it wasn't sin that he had to get angry at then. He was angry at that separation caused by it. There are examples in the New Testament, brief examples, where God's nostril flare, aph, A-P-H, Ananias and Sapphira, although in Acts 5, although the Bible doesn't say God killed them, it's a hard argument to make that they didn't die for a cause after having lied to the Holy Ghost. So I believe, can daddy still flare his nostrils? In defense of his children, any dad can get mad. That's why the Apostle Paul said, any man who destroys this temple, him will God destroy. Why did Paul say that? Sounds like God's on a bloodthirsty hunt. No. And this temple was not you. He, in that context, he was talking about the church, Corinth. He said, don't worry, Corinth. Any man that comes after you, God's got your back. Why? Because every now and then, you want your daddy to get mad. Not on a sin hunt, but in defense of his church. And in defense of his church. Has God had to step up at any time in the last 2,000 years and defend his church? Come on. Yes, he has. And you're glad when he flares his nostrils in defense of his son. And thank God for it. So I do not doubt that my daddy can get a little mad if he needs to. But I refuse to believe that my daddy gets mad at my sin because my dad is just and has died so that I would have no separation. Thank God for favor that lasts a lifetime. Now, if you can get past that feeling that God's mad at you, then you're ready for favor that lasts a lifetime. And here's what you need to expect. That for the rest of your days, because of Jesus having paid for the separation, you can expect that God only wants to be good on your behalf. You don't ever have to accuse God of being bad. You don't ever have to accuse God of taking from you. We've established a lot of principles in the last four weeks that God's not a taker, God's a giver. All of this has culminated in the idea that this is supposed to last for the rest of your Christian walk, not just as long as you're in a good church, not just as long as you're listening to the grace message, not just because you found the right translation, all the silly things that men think facilitate the favor of God. But every day before you slap your feet on the floor, just remember, whether you like to say things out loud or not, it's up to you. But every day before you start your day, just remember, that I'm a recipient today of God's favor because he's my daddy and I'm a son. Favor runs in my family and God doesn't know how to turn the spigot of favor off. God cannot turn it off in my life. So God, I receive your favor today and I believe it's going to be better today than it was yesterday. And I'm believing you that favor lasts a lifetime.